So the question that we have is that we've been provided with two tables, user orders and ordered items. A user can have multiple orders and within each order, there may be multiple items with either the same or different categories. We have to find a user that has the highest number or highest average number of unique item categories per order. Hi everyone. Today we have a mock interview with my colleague, Sai. He's a lead data analyst at Blue Cross Primera in North Carolina. Today we'll be tackling a question that you can expect to see in typical data science interviews or data analyst interviews. So with that, let's get started. So hey, Sai, welcome. Thanks for joining today's meeting. You know, I'd love to go through a question with you that we can expect to see in the typical work that you do. Okay, awesome. So the question that we have today in front of us is that we've been provided with two tables, user orders and ordered items. A user can have multiple orders and within each order, there may be multiple items with either the same or different categories. We have to find a user that has the highest number or highest average number of unique item categories per order. And we have a couple tables on the left listed. So I kind of kick this over to you. Uh, any questions that you want to ask me before we get started? Nothing for now. Maybe I'll take a minute to read the question, grasp it, and then I'll see if I have any doubts. Perfect. Okay. We have the assumption. Okay. That there is only one user with the highest average number of unique item categories per hour. Okay. We got two tables. And then the result needs to have username and then number of average unique items per order. And then the username is in one table, the category is in another table. So my first instinct would be join these both tables. And then since we need item category for all the usernames, I would use a inner join. So as you're writing this out, I'd love to give an insight to our audience about how you're thinking about this problem and how you're approaching it. Can you walk me through how you're thinking about it? Yeah, sure. That username, if you see the output, the result has two columns. One is username, the other one is average unique item categories per order. So mm -hmm. as we see, the username is in user orders table and then the item categories is in ordered items table. So my first instinct was to like uh, join these tables using the uh, primary key, uh, using mm -hmm. the common column between uh, the two tables which I see mm -hmm. order ID. So if you see there's order ID unique uh, here and then we have items and then item category in the other table. So my plan is mm -hmm. to uh, join these two tables and then uh, think of uh, getting the average. That would be uh, my next step. Makes sense to me. Okay, thanks. And O dot uh, order ID. So now that uh, I have joined, let me remove star. So I would select column names first, the ones uh, that I require. Now that I've joined the two tables, I'll select the required columns. Here we need to calculate average unique item categories per order. So for that, first I'll calculate number of distinct order items per order per each user. So I would use count of since I'm using an aggregate function uh, I'll use group by and then I'll check the output first uh, before proceeding further. So let me check the code for any errors before proceeding further. Okay, it's expected that it's failed. Okay. Okay, now that I see uh, for each username and then in order ID, I have number of uh, distinct order items. So Dusen in one of the orders, order ID one has two items and then Dusen in order ID two has one item. So now I need to uh, find average unique item categories per order, which is going to be two plus one by two for Dusen and then, okay, got it. So 
So let me put it into a CT. So I will use as suborder. Okay, it is stored in a temporary table. I can select a username. And then since I need the average, I'll use uh, some function to find the uh, total orders for each uh, username and then divide it by number of orders for each username. As maybe I'll take this name. You can put it to next line for readability. And then from suborder table, which is a CTE. Since I'm using an aggregate function, aggregate functions, I would use group by. And I need the find a user, which means that the output needs only one user that has the highest average number of unique items. Okay. So I need to order it by the second column in the descending order since we need the higher peer username with the highest uh, average unique items categories. And then since you need only top user, I would use the limit function. So if you see, yeah, the Houston has an average 1.5 uh, unique item categories uh, per order. So this would be my uh, solution. But like, uh, since we have this assumption that you may assume that there is only one user, uh, I was using the limit function. But if there was no, if the assumption was not there, I would be using a rank function to mm, rank them accordingly, if, see if there's any tie or not, and then further uh, develop the query to find out their multiple users with uh, same average or like if there's any tie. So that way I can use the rank functions. So what business decision do you think this table could drive? And are there any other things that we can do to improve the kind of information or the kind of insight that we can give uh, the end user or the consumer of this query? Yeah, sure. So by finding uh, like number of unique category items that the user is buying, so you can extract a lot of insights. Like say one user might be ordering only one item, like say one category, like mm -hmm. he likes only cosmetic products, like maybe his recommendations can be changed on the website, like say personalized recommendations to show him only mm -hmm. uh, items related to the category that he's searching. Let's say mm -hmm. that the result shows that the user is ordering a lot of items from a lot of categories. And then the UI for him, like say, uh, if you see Amazon or like Walmart, the personalized recommendation, recommendation system, how they work. So you see based on your previous searches. So in the same way, if you are considering the ordered items rather than the previous searches, and then the, uh, the initial homepage can be customized based on the user. Like if they like cosmetics or if they like sports, the page might be filled with sports items, like say new items released in that category, in the, in the category of sports or like uh, any other mm -hmm. uh, category, if that is uh, diverse. And then you can put it uh, multiple categories like cosmetics, sports, electronics mm -hmm. and everything. That way the revenue can be increased. The users tend to spend more money, a good revenue for the uh, company. So that would be a good business case for this. As far as I can think, I mean, it would be best to like, if you see Amazon, yeah. Best Buy, Walmart, the recommendation systems, I think they're driving good revenue to all the companies. Uh, we order a lot. We go to buy a laptop and then we end up buying mouse and keyboard also. It makes sense. The business that you're thinking this would be most applicable to is an e-commerce based. Like it, it would fit into e-commerce and then it would fit best into recommendation systems. Makes yeah. sense. Are there any other things that you could recommend that a business do based on the insight presented in this table outside of recommendations? And feel free to study the, the output as well. I think we can spend a little bit of time there, yeah, uh, sure. the output in, of your query itself. I was thinking maybe we could offer something customized discount if you could include that feature for each mm -hmm. user. Like say, if you see here the output in these categories, like we have at around uh, two categories. Uh, if we take 1.5, uh, if you round it, we have two categories. So Dusan mm -hmm. uh, is uh, ordering particularly from those two categories. And then if we could calculate the number of items also, like this would be a extra query that we need, right? If we have the data. So we 
would know how many items he is ordering and then how many categories and the number of uh, orders maybe having a threshold for each of that in from the larger data we could give them customized coupons or discount to generate more revenue so even in my work that's what we do generally so we have the data and then see uh, i come from insurance background and then we use it to uh, we use this data for instead users we use it for agents like who sell our products to small scale businesses and then we send them to trips based on the revenue they get us so in the same way if we could use this data to give them customized coupons like say email them saying like since you have bought these many products from these many categories and then you have been ordering multiple times here's a coupon for you for your next order maybe a 5% discount or 10% discount just for these users to further motivate them to buy more mm-hmm. that's a strategy we use at work and then i pro i get the data and then uh, we send agents to trips based on the revenue they get for us okay how about on the product assortment or supply chain side how could the findings from this query drive decisions on what the store stocks and how much of it it keeps in stock yeah that's a good way to think if we could expand this query to get the user location or the number mm-hmm. of items as we were discussing before if there are more users and then more number of categories are being sold in particular location we could increase the mm-hmm. stock there and then based on the location filter maybe in some other location the number of item the number of categories are not uh, sold like most of it might be in the warehouse line there so we could mm-hmm. maybe transfer mm-hmm. those stock items to another location based on the user's mm-hmm. location or i wouldn't say user location but then the delivery location because the user might be from one location and then he might be delivering to multiple locations like the delivery address might be different so based on the location filters we could keep transferring stock from one inventory to another inventory so that would save uh, a lot of money instead of generating revenue this would be a case where uh, you could reduce the inventory loss perfect can you maybe just sum it all up what was the problem that you were trying to solve what was your finding and then how would user interpret some of this information based on the categories that we just discussed yeah sure so the initial uh, business case was uh, we have two tables one is user orders and then order items the first table mm-hmm. consists of the user information and then it has the order id the other one mm-hmm. has the information on orders like what are the items in the order and the number of categories in each item id so mm-hmm. the business case was to find the user who has most highest average number of unique item categories per order mm-hmm. so my mm-hmm. thought process was to first find the uh, number of item categories for each order based on like each order number like uh, me, myself mm-hmm. sai in uh, order number 1 i have two categories order number 2 has three mm-hmm. categories so what would be the average and then mm-hmm. once i got that data and i found out the average for those two orders so sai mm-hmm. has three categories in one order and then sai has two categories in another order so average would be 2.5 and then based on these results uh, what we can do is we could use it in the supply chain market where we could reduce the inventory loss and then the the other case would be uh, customizing the ui for each user like say if sai is interested in electronics since he is ordering mm-hmm. multiple items from electronics category his home page would be filled with uh, electronic items that way mm-hmm. sai will tend to buy more products and then if a user is buying from different categories he can use it i mean the home page can be uh, divided into multiple categories to make the user buy more products in the category mm-hmm. uh, that he has been ordering from long time so these are the mm-hmm. two cases where the output of this query can be used to generate revenue and reduce the loss which is ultimately generating revenue or making more money makes sense great Okay, thank you so much for your time. Then we'll conclude the interview here. Now let's spend a couple minutes just debriefing. I'd love to hear from you. Let's start with what do you think you did well and what do you think you could have done better? Got it. Coming to what I did well, I was able to find the average number of unique item categories per order mm-hmm. which can be used in multiple cases as I have mentioned and the thought process for recommending like right now in Amazon or Best Buy if you see it's based on our searches but not based on our mm-hmm. orders because and then I understand that the reason might be not everyone uh, who searches will order so it can also be customized <laughs> based on the orders rather than just searches mm-hmm. that might generate more revenue because the person is ordering those items mm-hmm. that's the part i think i did really well okay what do you think would change your leveling from a junior or an intermediate data analyst to a senior data analyst what do you think is the differentiating factor when interviewers are thinking about leveling got it maybe including the cost of implementation or maybe if i could see the time it takes and then if i could also do an ab test like say what happens in ab testing like say for uh, as i mentioned before 
our recommendation system just is based on the searches and then orders like mm-hmm. maybe for a small group we could test on searches and then for another group we could test on orders and then maybe if we see the results on the ab test mm-hmm. we would mm-hmm. know if moving to recommendations based on orders would benefit or like staying as research the search items that we do would generate us more revenue maybe that way i could take this further i mean as a senior data analyst maybe that would be uh, my instinct to test it first before rolling out to to the customers or users makes sense okay great so i think i fully agree i think you uh, tackled the problem extremely efficiently you got to the query extremely fast you were able to make one or two edits and get it going i think that is a level of proficiency that usually people with one or two maybe years of experience as a data analyst or even as a data scientist will have like if you're good with sql and that's base level but i think where the leveling happens in interviewers minds and where it was going with me is how do you connect this to business outcomes and that's why i was pushing you a bit so if you notice for our audience you know if you notice your interviewer kind of nudging you in a certain direction try to catch on and see where you can go with that so the seniority also is dependent on n- the number of ideas and the depth of your ideas that you can generate for the business so give me an example i think you spent a lot of time describing how a recommendation system could be used in an e-commerce business and that was it but you didn't really need to go more than that and describe and make it real like amazon or best buy or pick a specific retailer i know why you did it but think about high level themes so things like we take the findings implement in a recommendation system in a typical e-commerce that's great then you develop customer profiles with targeted off so you get certain discounts based on certain number of categories that it hits that a shopping cart has and then the next thing could be moving i really like your creative idea on moving unused items from one warehouse to another based on user location but what i was also thinking is what if we could actually increase assortment in a specific vertical so let's assume that we saw a lot of people buying items in the cosmetics category and we could actually improve this we could increase the number of brands that we carry and we can also look at are people buying a certain type of skincare product versus than another. To give you an example, maybe we discover that actually Korean skincare and Western skincare products are of a different category. And maybe there's a way to actually look at and improve the categorization that we have of products as well. So right now we're relying on a basic level, but the senior really goes above and beyond. It tries to proactively field stakeholder questions about the query so that they can have things ready to go. And I think there's a really good data engineer that I like to follow and for our audience. His name is Zach, but he was a former data data engineer at Airbnb. And what he does really well is the highest level or the person that has, you can tell who's very well versed in data actually just is very good at communicating their findings to stakeholders and proactively thinking about what stakeholders could ask and then solving those before they even get into the room. Because often I'll have 10 questions as a stakeholder and I'll fire them all at you. And then if a DA already has those questions in mind and has thought critically about the problem from a business lens, then you basically save a ton of time going back and forth between the stakeholders. But I completely agree with your finding about thinking, can this query run at scale? Can I perform any A-B experiments with it? So those are good, I would say, technical recommendations. But don't forget that there are also a set of business recommendations that you want to basically package the solution with so that people can go back and say, here is the action that I can take based on this. And here is the level of research that was given to me and the evidence that I have to make it happen. Because otherwise, think about it like this. You present to the stakeholder and you're going to actually spend another four or five meetings going back and forth on stakeholder questions. What if you actually shrunk that and tried to field all their things in one meeting? You basically saved a ton of time and now they can go back and make a decision and then ping you or message you in an async way so that you don't have to go uh, and do that friction. But overall, honestly, good interview. I think it shows your proficiency and you thought about the problem and you were able to tackle it really well. But I think for our audience, make sure that you're thinking about business outcomes as well as the query. That's what will differentiate you from juniors and intermediates and level you up to a senior or even principal. So that's the finding, but overall, great job. Thank you. Thank you for the feedback. I'll keep in mind to think of business recommendations as well. And any feedback for me? Like, did you think that I could do anything differently as an interviewer? How did you think about how this went? No, I mean, this this was really good. Like uh, you were pushing me to think uh, in a different way, like say supply chain. And then I wasn't thinking of inventory part. And then I was only thinking of how a user would think, but then not from business perspective. And Mm -hmm. that was something like I never had someone asking me or like pushing me in that way to think. So I could think of inventory because you were pushing me. So I really like that thing, like as an interviewee. (laughs) Nice. Okay, cool. So let's let's stick with this format then. All right. Thank you. Okay. Thanks everyone. Have a great okay, weekend, all of you. See you.